In this video, we're going to go over what is Parasite SEO, why you should be concerned about it, and all of these changes that have happened to Google since last year, around starting around September, October, when they started releasing their Google Helpful Content Update. I hate to call it the Google Helpful Content Update because it was not very helpful. Not helpful to blog bloggers, not helpful to searchers not helpful to people like me that are searching for specific answers on the internet. And I don't want to get someone's opinion. I want to look for the information and get someone's experiences. A lot of that has been gone. I'm not so concerned um, with SGE. If you haven't watched my SGE videos, you can do that. That's the search generative experience that Google has uh, put onto the search engines right now where they have AI answering, they have been doing a lot of pushback. So people were so scared of this, especially bloggers, because we thought that it was just going to really disseminate a lot of the traffic to bloggers. This is when they started, Google started rolling this out just to a few Amer you know, few million Americans um, of last year. I did get on the panel. I was one of the testers for this. And I did give my notes, like if I didn't like the answer, I did give them my feedback. Now, I don't think advertisers are liking this a lot. I don't know if this is hurting Google's bottom line, but we have been starting to see some pushback in the SGE becoming a major part of the search engine experience. Now, what we have noticed, which has been just, I will tell you, it's just been devastating to bloggers, and that is the mix-up of how Google is showing who's on page one. So this is for organic traffic I'm talking about. So if you are a blogger or a service industry and you have a website, they, this is stuff like that. Now, what we've noticed a lot lately and since this update started happening is number one, we started seeing Reddit and Quora being at the top of all the search queries. Now, it used to be years ago, or up until a year ago, I would say, that if you saw Core or Reddit on page one, you knew you could take that spot. That meant that no heavy hitters were really going after your, con the really heavy high domain authority competitors were not going after those keywords that, that pay those uh, sites were showing up for. Now, they're showing up for very intensive keywords, like keywords that you and I want to rank for. Now, we're seeing us competing against Reddit and Quora. The next thing that we see is that sites like Forbes, which has nothing to do with medical stuff, okay, so we're seeing sites like Forbes um, and all the big magazines, news, uh, you know, just, oh, I'm just trying to think of different magazines, um, but Forbes is what we see a lot of, probably the most. Now, to me, Forbes is a magazine that should be writing about money and about how to be an entrepreneur and who's making money and how they're making money and things like that. Well, I just found that they ranked for a medical question, even above WebMD. And I'm thinking, Forbes is not a, a site full of doctors. So that, that whole swinging around and doing all this, Google kept saying, write what your readers want to read about. But now these sites that don't have the answer to your question are on page one. So I'm finding that I'm moving, like when I'm doing my searches, I am finding that I'm going next, 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 or scrolling, because sometimes with my site, I can just keep scrolling down and down and down the page. So I'm looking on, pa like if they were pages, I'm looking on page three and four, trying to find a blogger, trying to find the real answers to my questions. Let me give you an example of something one of my SEO colleagues discovered. So she was doing a search for how to get rid of dog hair, pet hair, um, from her, uh, it wasn't at the couch, it was something else in the house, and it was getting all over it. So she Googled it, and Forbes came up first, and then another big magazine came up second. And another, some other big site that has a lot of Google authority came up third. And then Reddits and Quora's were showing up. And she didn't want those answers. She didn't want, so someone writing about that on Forbes might not even have a dog. They're just being hired. They hire writers. And that writer is writing an article. Um, 
if that was me, and now that her story was the same as mine, if that was me looking for that, if I was asking that question, I would want to find, let's say I'm a mom, I would want to find another mom, a mom that maybe has five kids and three dogs. And I want to know what did she do? Like, what is her story? How did she get rid of that dog hair on such and such? Let's just say it's on the couch. Let's say she just can't seem to get rid of it on the couch. What is she, and then the kids are all over the couch. And then the three dogs and, you know, all this. I want to know that story. It's the same thing like what bothers me too about YouTube videos showing up on page one. A lot of times I want to know the answer to the question, but I don't want to watch a video about it. I just want to see number one, number, I want to see a bullet list of what to do about the situation that I'm asking about. All of that is going away, and that's really annoying. I had another uh, SEO colleague of mine who's a lifestyle blogger, and she went to a conference, and over half, um, almost like, no, more than half of all of the lifestyle bloggers lost half of their traffic. And they're losing that traffic to Reddit, Quora, and these big companies that shouldn't even be on page one because they are not authorities in those spaces. And Google says they want you to be an authority in your space. Well, that's obviously a lie. So, you know, and a lot of the things like I don't believe, I've never believed everything Google has said about SEO because they don't want you gaming the system, right? So they don't want you to rank on number page on page one on page number one if you don't fit their criteria for that, right? And we're, and as an SEO, we're looking for ways to show up. We're, yes, I mean, is it gaming the system? Of course it is. But there's no other way because if you just blog to blog, you're never going to be there. So you have to do keyword research. You have to do link building. You have to set up eat. You have to prove your authority. I mean, there's so many things. You got to get reviews. There's so many things you have to do. And, um, and so you have to do them. Now, I don't know how this is going to switch out. When Google first did this content update, they specifically came out and said on Twitter that they weren't going to backstroke, that they weren't going to change anything. But they're getting so much backlash right now, and I think they're losing revenue from blogs because blogs bring in, the, besides the Google ads that you see on page one like or at the top of Google, those sponsored spots, people pay to be in those sponsored spots. But the number one, and that's one of the main ways that they make money, but the other way is by the ads you see on people's blogs. So it doesn't matter if you're with Google AdSense, Azoic, Mediavine, any of the big companies that do media buying, they all buy it through Google. And so the um, companies then want to be in front. They don't want to lose money. So those companies want to keep advertising. At the same time that this is going on, you have all your cookies disappearing, which, again, you're not being able to do a lot of um, um, you know, retargeting of your ads as much as you used to be able to. So it becomes a really difficult place for Google to be in, but yet at the same time, it's putting bloggers in a really bad place too. Now, I don't say that you should quit blogging. You should definitely not quit blogging. There are people, and I'm one of those people, that want to read blogs. I want to get my answers from real people living real lives that have real issues like I do, and I want to learn from their experiences. And I want to learn from their experiences more than I want to read somebody's negative comment on Reddit, you know, or somebody thinks they're all that on Quora and they're like some authority and they're giving wrong information. So I don't want that. I want to read um, people who actually are in that niche, working it and living it daily. So what can we do about all of this? So one of the things is if your traffic, if you've seen your traffic drop, if you've seen that big hit, you'll see it when you look on your Google Analytics. If your line has been going like this and then you see a sudden drop, you got hit. You might have had a manual penalty, but most likely you just got hit with the Google Helpful Content update. So what to do about that? One thing is you should just keep putting out really good content and doing your, keep blogging, but you've got to diversify your traffic sources. So these are some of the things that we are working on. Number one, where Pinterest is picking up a lot on Google, but we don't want to be on Pinterest to be on Google, but we want to be on Pinterest to get traffic to our website, to the articles. So Pinterest is good at generating traffic to your website. 
So if you do it correctly. So that's one of the things that we're working on. We're also working a lot on Twitter and sending links back to our site, um, YouTube videos, sending links back to our site. And then we're doing Parasite SEO. And Parasite SEO is where you blog on other platforms that have extremely high authority that are going to beat your website. But at least if it's going to beat your website, let it be you. And this is what I used to teach back in 2009 and 10. This was a really big thing. One of the courses that I used to teach back then was called How to Dominate 7 Out of 10 Places on Page 1 on Google. And we did it through what they call now Parasite SEO. We just called it Page 1 Domination back then. But people call it Parasite SEO right now. So... What is a site, a couple of, a few sites that will always rank above your site are going to be LinkedIn and Medium. So those are two, um, there's others, of course, but those are two that I see showing up all the time, every single day. So start a Medium blog and start a LinkedIn blog. Now, I'm not talking about your LinkedIn profile in the part where you just write the little post. You have to actually click on write an article and you write the articles in LinkedIn and those are going to rank. So it doesn't matter where you're going to get that lead from. The more important thing is getting the lead. So now that traffic from LinkedIn and Medium might not, you're not going to see the translation of a lot of clicks over to your website from that unless you're using it as a funnel, part of a funnel. But in most instances, you're going to want your call to action and everything to be inside that LinkedIn article and inside that Medium article so people don't have to take as many steps to reach you. So your contact information needs to be in the article. The way to text you or call you or fill out a form needs to all be there right then and there, right? So you're not having to make them jump through hurdles just to get through you because most people won't do that. Um, so that would mean that's one less, you know, one less traffic over to your website, but closer to a sale. So make sure that when we're doing Parasite SEO, we are doing that. So we're doing LinkedIn, Medium, uh, if you're in, if you're in real estate, Active Rain, um, or Bigger Pockets, things like that. You're going to want to make sure you find industry blogs in your niche space and make sure you start to blog on them. Even if there's a small fee every month, it's going to be very well worth it. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. So try those things and let me know how that works for you.